Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So back in November of 2022, I made a confession to, to you all that I have not shampooed, brushed, or combed my hair in about six or seven years now. That was, that was a bit of an exaggeration, but anyways, that video kind of sparked a big thing for me and for a lot of you. That video was all about my natural, historically inspired and minimalist hair care routine that has grown my hair out to now tailbone length after having had a chin length haircut. And prior to that haircut, I was never able to grow my hair past my high ribs area. And so obviously something has changed and it's my different hair care routine. Now, the thing is my hair is curly and a lot of you either have totally straight hair or your hair isn't as curly as mine or maybe your hair is more curly than mine maybe you have kinky hair and so this video is going to be breaking down a series of different routines for either straight curly or kinky hair types and you can basically choose which one suits your hair type best maybe a mixture of two of them and i really hope this is going to make the hair care routine seem a lot more accessible and practical for those of you who maybe liked the information found it inspiring but just maybe didn't know where to begin especially if you have a different hair type than i myself have so that's what this video is going to be all about these are going to be tailored tips for all different hair types so if you haven't seen my original historical hair care video, check it out. It will be linked in the cards and in the description, but don't check it out until you've watched this video. <laughs> Basically, this routine focuses on natural and historically informed hair care practices that help to retain the hair's natural oils, prevent breakage, and increase scalp health, all with natural ingredients. All of this, of course, contributes to longer and thicker hair, without the need for a bunch of commercial, chemically laden hair products that typically cost a lot of money. So my natural hair routine focuses on ingredients like rasul clay, apple cider vinegar, and oils. Those are really the three main tenets of this hair care routine. And then it also re relies on the use of certain hair care practices, such as dry finger detangling of the hair and the use of protective hairstyles. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about protective hairstyles, then check out my other videos on that linked in the cards and in the description. But basically there are so many different ways to customize these main tenets of the historical hair care routine. And that's what this video is going to be all about. Please note that I will be providing a written version of all of these recipes and an overview of each of these different hair care routines, the three different routines for the different hair types. And there will be instructions for you in the description about where and how you can access that. So be sure to check that out and you can print it out and it will be that much easier to use. Also, before we get into it, please note that while I don't personally use shampoo on my hair, making this technically a no poo hair routine, um, shampoo isn't necessarily evil. It's really all about your own hair type, knowing what your hair likes and what it needs, and then also choosing your products with care. So if you are interested in still using shampoo in combination with the Rasul Clay, that's definitely an option if you need that extra cleansing oomph to get the oils out. And I will link a couple options for natural shampoos that I can personally recommend that I am not sponsored by in any way. I just honestly think they're great products if that's something you're interested in. The same goes for conditioner. I am not personally using conditioner. I have not been for several months now, but if you want to use conditioner, there will also be an option for that in the description. I'd like to quick, take a quick break to introduce you to the sponsor of this video, Tymo and their Air Hype hair dryer. So you may know that I have actually worked with Tymo in the past and there's good reason for that. I absolutely love their hair dryer. Now, big confession, in the past, I was never much of a hair dryer girl because I don't use heat on my hair. But the amazing part about the Tymo Air Hype is that you can get your hair dry using only room temperature air. And there are actually many benefits to speeding up the drying process of your hair, especially if you want to improve your hair health. Hair is much weaker when it is wet, so it's a good idea to not be walking around for several hours with wet hair and you know getting it caught on things it's more of a chance of breakage as well as having wet hair can also negatively impact your scalp if your hair and scalp are just staying wet for a very long period of time it is a really good idea to speed up that process 
And there's no better hair dryer to use for this than the Tymo Air Hype. Again, like I mentioned, it can get your hair dry or at least much drier using only room temperature air. Or if you want to use some heat, there are a few heat settings. But the amazing thing about it is that due to its compressed air technology and its increased air velocity, you can actually get your hair dry if you want to use heat, you can use heat, but the settings of heat don't go nearly as high as your average run of the mill hair dryer because they don't need to go as high. It can still get your hair dry while using a fraction of the amount of heat, which is amazing for hair health. I especially love the Tymo Air Hype for my curls because it comes with this amazing adjustable diffuser. This really helps me to get extra volume at my roots without having to use, you know, the typical commercial products that people would typically use to get volume. I can just add in that volume by drying my hair with the Tymo Air Hype. And it really just helps my curls be more defined, especially since my hair has gotten so long that the sheer weight of it as it's drying can kind of stretch out my curls. So this just helps me get that extra bounce in my curls. But if you have straight hair, it also comes with this concentrator nozzle, which can help you get the style that you want for your straight hair. When I first received my Tymo Air Hype several months ago now, I was immediately impressed by the sleek and sophisticated packaging and just the sleek minimalist design of this hair dryer. Compared to the hair dryer that I had before, which I've actually donated because I like the Air Hype so much better, that one was so much more bulky, it took up so much more space, and the Tymo is just so attractive and sleek and minimalist of a shape, and I really love that. It also has this very minimalist and intuitive control setting feature so you can control how much air you want to come out which is symbolized by these little fan symbols on the lcd display screen and then you can also select between the different heat settings and again using room temperature air is a feasible option with this hair dryer another thing i love about the timo air hype is how quiet it is if you are a mom, you will understand the struggle of wanting to dry your hair, but also not wanting to wake people up. And also just in addition to that, I just don't like loud noises. So the hair dryer I had before, I never really used it because I just found it so stressful and overwhelming having this really loud noise going in my ears for so long. But the Tymo Air Hype is really quite quiet, which is impressive considering the amount of air velocity that comes out of this hair dryer. So if you're wanting to find a high quality hair dryer to help you improve the health or length of your hair, look no further than the Tymo Air Hype. It is really an amazing option. It is comparable to high-end brands such as Dyson while being available at a fraction of the price. If you'd like to get your very own Tymo Air Hype today, check out the link in the description and there will be a code for you where you can get a significant discount on your own hair dryer and I recommend you try it out. Thank you Tymo for sponsoring this video. Okay, so let's get started. The following hair routines are based on generalizations of hair types. Use these routines as a starting point to get to know your hair. These routines don't address the frequency of washing. If you have been washing more frequently than once every five to seven days, you may want to gradually space these out, keyword gradually. Protective styles between washes are a good idea for all hair types. For more information, see my protective styles videos. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about curly hair just like mine. So curly hair is prone to tangles and frizz. So those are the main things that we want to combat as well as just dryness and a tendency towards breakage. So if you want to be growing longer hair, especially we just need to have a lot of TLC for our curls and be very gentle in the way that we handle them. And let's talk about the specifics of how exactly that works. Pre-wash care. Okay, so every good hair care routine does not begin with how you wash your hair. It actually begins with how you treat your hair before you wash it. So in other words, the night before you're planning to wash your hair, or at least several hours before if you're going to wash your hair at night, I always recommend doing some kind of pre-wash treatment for all hair types. It's just going to differ exactly what type of treatment you do for different textures of hair. So for curly hair, again, there is such a spectrum of curly hair. So you really have to know your own hair and experiment, but I do recommend doing an oil treatment for your scalp and for your hair length before you wash it. 
So for your scalp, this should be some sort of oil treatment that's going to promote thicker growth and promote a healthier scalp. And if you'd like my herbal hair growth oil recipe, which is a great option to use for this, you can watch that video in the cards above and it will also be linked in the description. And then you're going to want to apply oil to your hair length. And this actually leads me into a slightly different but related topic, which is that of how are you going to detangle your hair? So I recommend dry finger detangling hair, and that is because it minimizes the risk of breakage, especially for curly hair, because curly hair can have so much tangles build up that if you just start ripping through your hair with a comb while it's wet, even if you have conditioner in it, that can really cause a lot of damage to your hair because hair is much more likely to snap and break off when it's wet. So while I do recommend dry finger detangling, that doesn't mean that you can't use other aids to detangle your hair, such as oils or butters. So there's all manner of different oils you can use. If your hair is on the drier or coarser side, you can use something a little heavier like castor oil or coconut oil or olive oil. But if you think your hair can't stand that much oil and it will be weighed down, then use something lighter like jojoba oil or argan oil. So after you've done this initial dry detangling, with the hair oil, then you can go in with a spray detangler like an apple cider vinegar spray, which is just apple cider vinegar and filtered water, maybe some essential oils. And again, you can find how you can get the recipe for that in the description, but you just basically lightly spray that on your hair and then that can get your hair to a further point of detangling. If you'd like to see a whole video on my detangling process, that will be linked in the description or in the cards as well. So once you've gotten your hair detangled with some oil and some spray, depending on how much oil you've already added to your hair, maybe you just added a little bit or maybe you just used some light oil to detangle and you'd like to do an actual mask, you can apply more oil or a different type of oil or an actual mask. And if you'd like to see a video on a moisturizing mask, that will also be linked in the description. But that one that I'm referencing right now, it is honey and oil basically that's all it is and that's a nice moisturizing mask or you could just use straight up oil like coconut oil or castor oil even if your hair is dry cleansing okay so let's talk about cleansing your curly hair so as i mentioned before if you prefer to use a shampoo that is totally an option just make sure you're using one that's very gentle and as natural as possible and this can be a way to help you cleanse the oil out of your hair because sometimes that's something people struggle with when they're first starting to use oils however it is also a totally feasible option to go shampoo free and i myself have not used shampoo in a very, very, very long time and my hair is fine, but it does sometimes take a little tweaking to figure out how to properly cleanse oil out of your hair without shampoo. But again, it's totally possible. So the magic ingredient that has really made all the difference for my natural hair care routine and that of so many others who have gotten back to me after using this routine themselves is Rasul Clay. Clay is an amazing product that comes from the earth. It's mineral rich and it has a negative ionic charge and it's alkaline and it's porous. So it attracts dirt and oils to itself and cleanses your hair while also nourishing and strengthening it. It's also amazing for scalp health and cleansing and detoxifying the scalp. Another huge benefit of clay washing specifically for curly hair is that it helps improve your natural curl pattern without having to use a bunch of styling products afterwards. I don't know about you, but the times that I've used shampoo for my curls, it totally destroys my natural curl pattern. It gets my hair feeling very dry and just the curls are gone. And so I have, to, I have to go in later with a bunch of conditioner and styling products to sort of bring those curls back. Not so with clay washing. Clay washing cleans your hair while actually improving the separation and the curl pattern of your hair. So that's really amazing. If you have hair that's curly a little bit, but it's still more on the straight side and you'd like to bring out more of your curls, clay is also very amazing for that, for defining whatever curl pattern you naturally have and just making it more beautiful and healthy. So again, if you'd like the recipe for the clay wash, there will be instructions for you in the description about how you can access that. But I'll just give a word about what you want to mix the clay with. So first of all, you want your mixture to be very watery for the exact ratio that will be in the description. But basically you want to use either plain water with the clay powder or a mixture of water and aloe vera juice. It just depends on how fancy you want to be. Maybe you want the added benefits of the aloe vera juice as well. It's really up to you. 
So the next step is going to be conditioner, if you desire it. Again, personally, I have not been using conditioner for a while because I find it to be redundant when I've done the pre-wash mask. It's basically like I've conditioned my hair just before the wash rather than after it. So I find conditioner redundant, but if you want to use conditioner or if you feel like your hair needs the extra moisture on any given day, then go ahead and do that after the clay wash. ACV rinse. The next step is sealing your hair cuticle and balancing your hair's pH, as well as improving your scalp health. And all of these can be achieved by using an apple cider vinegar rinse. So this is a very diluted mixture of a little bit of apple cider vinegar to a relatively large amount of filtered water. And you can put this in an applicator bottle to easily access your scalp and then apply to the length of your hair. And for most curly hair types, I recommend only leaving this in for one to two minutes and then rinsing it out with cool water and then you're done your shower styling okay so the last step is styling so I use and recommend DIY flaxseed gel which is an amazing curly hair styling product while also boasting some amazing hair benefits for your hair health it moisturizes the hair it helps seal the hair and make it be shiny while defining your curls and reducing frizz for my recipe on DIY flaxseed gel check the description Finally, I recommend sealing your hair ends with a small amount of a light oil, like jojoba oil or argan oil. Okay, so let's talk about a straight hair routine. This is one of my most frequently asked questions from people who are really feeling inspired to try out this natural minimalistic hair care routine, but maybe their hair is a lot different than mine and they're wondering if this can work for them. Yes, it totally can. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks now for straight hair to use this routine. So straight hair can be naturally sleek and shiny, which is beautiful, but it can also be prone to oiliness or dullness or limpness. So first of all, my biggest tip that I'm going to give, especially to straight haired people is the use of a boar bristle brush. A boar bristle brush is an amazing historical hair care tool that basically acts as a chemical free dry shampoo. It also stimulates the scalp and draws your natural oils from your scalp down through the length of your hair. For more information on boar bristle brushing, check out my video on that topic, which will be linked in the description. A boar bristle brush can also help you to go longer between your washes, which is great. Okay, so let's talk about pre-wash care for straight hair. Straight hair doesn't tend to struggle as much with tangles as curly hair does, but I still recommend to you to use dry finger detangling as your baseline method of detangling. And then once you've gotten it as detangled as you can with your fingers, you can go in with your boar bristle brush to get those added benefits of the boar bristle brushing. This will distribute your hair's natural oils throughout your hair, which are the, which is the best product for your hair. Just your hair is natural oils that are produced on your scalp. So now it's time for a pre-treatment. So I do recommend straight haired people to also use a scalp oil treatment. And again, you can check out my herbal hair growth oil recipe, which will be linked for you below. Or if you want, you can use something different, maybe just plain oil or maybe a lighter form of oil because that recipe is a little on the heavier side. However, you can still totally use it for straight hair. Even if you're oil prone, just use a very small amount and massage it in well. And the ingredients in that hair growth oil will help to balance your scalp's natural production of oils and just maybe tone it down a bit. You can also use a little bit of oil on the length of your hair. Just probably use a lighter type of oil if you have straight hair like jojoba oil or argan oil. And remember, a little goes a long way. Okay, so when you're ready to wash your hair, again, a word about how frequently you might want to wash your hair as a straight haired person. If you have been used to washing your hair every day or every other day, you don't wanna just right off the bat jump to jump to only washing it once a week. Although that is a healthy goal to have in mind, you don't have to do it right away. You can ease into just washing maybe every three days or then every four days. And I do truly believe that if you use this routine, it will definitely help to balance out your hair's natural oil production, especially if you use the boar bristle brush and it will help you to drag out the time between washes. Okay, so with straight hair, especially if you're oily prone, you might definitely opt to use a gentle shampoo in combination with the clay. 
Um, I still think this is a really amazing combo. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. The shampoo can help to really cleanse out any excess oil. And then you can go in with your clay and that will help you to get the benefits of the clay into your hair with, without a lot of oil blocking it, so to speak. And again, for natural shampoo options, check the description. If you'd like to use a little shampoo, but you'd make, you make want to make sure that you're not drying out your hair, you can actually dilute your shampoo in a hair applicator bottle. Just put a little bit of shampoo into the bottle and fill the rest up with water. And that way you can get the shampoo applied throughout your hair with it being very gentle and diluted. So that's totally an option as well. Okay, so let's talk about clay washing for straight hair. Clay washing is really an amazing tool to use for any hair type, including straight hair. It does help strengthen the hair strand, which prevents breakage over the long run. It improves the health of the hair strands and it improves the health of your scalp and helps detoxify your scalp, which is especially useful if you've been dealing with years of, you know, chemical hair products or hair dyes building up in your scalp. Now, if you have oily prone hair, you might want to use bentonite clay, especially if you're relying on the clay alone to wash your hair. Bentonite clay is just a little more of a drying clay, whereas Rasool clay is a little more on the moisturizing side. So it's totally up to you and feel free to experiment with one or both. An added tip for those of you who really want to go shampoo free, but are finding that the clay just doesn't have quite enough oil cleansing properties, you can use an egg. This is a tip I've heard from several of my viewers and listeners that using an egg boosted the clay wash to get rid of any excess oil left in their hair. So you can either mix the egg with the clay wash itself, or you can use it as a separate treatment. It's really up to you. Okay, so go ahead and use conditioner if you're planning on using it, but if you have straight hair, just use a very tiny amount and only use it on your hair ends. Finally, it's time to rinse your hair. So go ahead and use that apple cider vinegar hair rinse. The recipe is going to be the same for all the hair types. Although if you have more oily hair, you might want to use a slightly higher concentration of the vinegar, or if you have drier hair, you might want to use a slightly lower concentration. Also, if you're really struggling with excessive oil in your hair, you can try leaving the vinegar rinse in your hair and not rinsing it out if it's diluted enough. Whereas with drier or curlier hair types, I do recommend rinsing out the vinegar rinse. Okay, once you get out of the shower, you go ahead and blot the moisture out of your hair using a gentle microfiber towel or a soft cotton t-shirt. And then you can style it however you like. So straight haired people can also use the flaxseed gel. It's a great moisturizing product. And if you do struggle more with dryness at your ends, you can also use a little tiny bit of a light oil like jojoba oil or argan oil to just seal your ends and seal that moisture into your ends. But be sure to only use a tiny amount. Wavy hair. Okay, so I'm not actually going to have a whole routine for wavy hair because in my opinion, there's such a wide range of people who identify as having wavy hair and some are more towards curly and some are more towards straight. So it's really gonna be up to you to decide where you are on that spectrum and whether your hair would best be suited with the more curly hair routine or with a straight hair routine or like somewhere in between. You know, you can tweak it. However, I will reiterate for my wavy haired friends, the immense value of clay washing for naturally defining and beautifying your beautiful hair texture, because a lot of wavy haired people struggle with embracing their texture because they feel like they're neither straight haired or curly haired. And so maybe they've just resorted to using heat to straighten their hair. Clay washing can really help heal your hair from that and help bring out your, the beauty of your natural hair texture. Okay, so let's talk about a kinky hair routine. Kinky hair is a beautiful hair type and it is really in a field of its own when it comes to hair care. But the beauty of it is that this routine that I've outlined so far is really well suited to kinky hair already. It's really has an emphasis on gentleness when handling our hair and not using harsh drying chemicals. So you're already like starting off on the right foot if you have kinky hair just by using the basic hair care routine that I've already outlined. So the main things to keep in mind with kinky hair are that it is prone to breakage and dryness. So you can really up the level of oils that you use, meaning that you can use oils more frequently than with straight hair, both on your scalp and on your hair length, and you can use heavier oils and heavier masks on your hair. You also just want to make sure that you're being very gentle when you're handling your hair, especially when you're detangling it. So let's go ahead and talk about the pre-wash care 
for kinky hair. So like I already said, dry finger detangling is even more essential for kinky hair. Now there is a wide variety of opinions on whether or not you should detangle kinky hair while dry or while wet, but I will say you just have to see how your hair reacts. But I do believe that if you use enough oil or butters on your hair, you can get it relatively dry detangled. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna get it completely detangled while it's in a dry state, but you're going to get it partway there. And then you can use a light spray detangler like aloe vera juice in water would be a great one for kinky hair. And to, you can use that to further detangle your hair, but it's always a good idea to just get it as detangled as you can first while it's in a dry state, just with oils or butters. And then you can go ahead and add moisture and take the detangling to a further level. But the great thing about kinky hair is that you can put your hair in all sorts of amazing protective styles throughout the week, or even for longer periods of time, depending on what styles you're using. And so you can kind of put the detangling to the side and not have to deal with that chore all the time necessarily. And then when you're ready to wash, maybe the night before wash, or maybe even a few days before the wash, you can start working on it because I know from my experience with my own hair and my sister's hair, who does, my sister has kinky hair, that detangling can take a long time and it's okay to deal with it in stages. But then, you know, that's when I would recommend, you know, first doing the dry detangling with the oil and then going ahead and maybe adding a spray detangler that you can make yourself that I already mentioned. Now you really want to go wild with your pre-wash treatment if you have kinky hair, because again, it's prone to dryness and breakage. And the great thing is that you really don't have to worry nearly as much about weighing down your hair when you have this hair type. You can just go wild with the really heavy oils like coconut oil, castor oil, you can use shea butter, cocoa butter. Um, you could even use animal fats if that's something you're interested in using. Tallow is a great one for skincare and hair care. So really just apply that liberally. You can again, use this as an aid for detangling your hair, and then you can also just let it sit on your hair the night before you wash. Or of course you can use a natural DIY moisturizing mask as well. And then of course I do recommend applying oil to your scalp, something that promotes scalp health and hair growth. And my herbal hair growth oil would be a great option for that. Okay. So let's talk about cleansing. So with kinky hair, this is a hair type that you can quite likely get away with only clay washing and not using any shampoo. And in fact, you may want to go this route because shampoo can definitely dry out hair. It's definitely possible to find gentle shampoos that work for kinky hair, but it's also very possible to just use clay to cleanse your hair since your, your hair already can handle a lot of oil without losing its body and its structure. So for kinky hair, I would definitely recommend sticking with the Rasool clay as opposed to bentonite. Bentonite might be good to use maybe once in a while as a more clarifying clay treatment, but Rasool clay is your best bet for, you know, regular hair washing use. And you can mix the Rasool clay with a mixture of water and aloe vera juice, or even all aloe vera juice. And this will just boost the moisturizing properties of the clay wash. Okay, so let's talk about conditioner. Again, you may not need to use conditioner even with kinky hair. It depends on what kind of pre-wash treatment you did. If you used a really heavy duty hair mask before your wash, conditioner may still be redundant for you. However, if you feel like you need that extra moisture, then please don't hesitate and use yourself a good natural conditioner that is more on the heavy moisturizing side. Okay, so let's talk about the final rinsing of your hair. You can definitely use the apple cider vinegar rinse that I've already described, or if you're afraid that it will dry out your hair too much, you can also use something like aloe vera juice as a final rinse. This will help your hair maintain its natural pH and just be more shiny and also help throughout the week with preventing too many tangles from occurring in your hair because it softens the hair a little bit. Okay. So for styling kinky hair, first of all, you want your styling products to be moisturizing. Of course, you don't need to use any styling products, but I do recommend using something for kinky hair just to help hold that moisture in and to just keep it a little more manageable. So you can use something just like shea butter or even coconut oil, but the butters are really great, especially if you're going to be putting your hair into a braided or twisted protective style. The shea butter can really help it just hold its shape 
and then you can later undo the style and have a really nice cool you know braid out or twist out if you want you can also make your own curly hair styling product by mixing the diy flaxseed gel that i already mentioned with some shea butter and that can make a great like curly hair custard sort of styling product although you might want to look into some sort of natural gentle preservative to put into that if you are planning on making your own Okay, so that's everything I have for you today, guys. I hope you found something helpful for your hair type in this video. If you're feeling inspired, please give this video a like and leave your comments and questions below. And again, if you like the full written out recipes and hair routine from this video for your own hair type, then follow the instructions in the description to get yourself a copy of that. Okay, guys, I'll see you on my next video.